But let's talk about the morning after the central banks surprising interest rate caught 100 basis point. What does it really mean for the markets? We'll talk a little about that now. Let's talk to uh, Wale Olusi, who is head of research at United Capital. Wale, it's good to see you. Good evening. Good evening, Bosin. Pleasure uh, to be here. I'm sure you enjoy some of the stories I was talking about in the news. Yes, I do. What picks your attention? I like, I like, I like to see Tony Elumelu's name on, on the headline. Uh, <laughs> yes, of course. That, that's a very, that's a, one interesting uh, gentleman. Uh, he, he doesn't look aged all these years. I've seen him as a journalist. Okay. Uh, he, he looks like, I don't know what, he, uh, what his secret really is. But again, with, uh, with what Mr. Up. President talk about African capitalism, that's the proponent. He's the evangelist of that. He's make a good name for himself. And I think he's done Nigeria and Africa proud. Absolutely. Congratulations, Tony Elimilu, among the world's best hundred, even in the year of the pandemic. So what's your take on the central bank's MPC latest rate cut on the key, on key market variables, Wale? Well, first, it was surprising. I mean... I, I, we didn't expect um, any you know, major policy shift from the MPC as of yesterday. Um, well, we were certain they would be concerned about the you know, fast rising inflation, the fact that recession is tearing us in the face, um, the illiquidity in the FX market. But you know, we, were, we were surprised to see a 100 basis point rate cuts. In, a, in an environment where inflation is clearly galloping and above 13%, which does not support growth in any way. And if you reduce interest rate by another, you know, um, 100 basis point to 11%, um, you, are pu you, are, you are pushing in more money into the market. And with more money on the street to chase, you know, fewer goods, to be honest, um, you are asking for more inflation. And above 13%, there's no way that, you know, that decision, we doubt if that decision is going to, in any way, you know, spur recovery. Boston. Yes, so, so, so how will this uh, uh, impact uh, the, the rich uh, court? How will it impact savers and investors' portfolio returns in the near to medium term? Well, I mean, for savers, I think um, the first thing we, we should bear in mind is that, don't forget, two weeks or so ago, the central bank came out to announce that you know the rate on savings rates, which before now was set at about 30% of NPR, has been reduced to 10% of NPR. You know, now that the underlying rate has also been reduced from 12.5% to 11.5%, what that also means is that you know the central bank is asking us not to save. Don't save your money in the bank. So because um, the banks are going to be giving you 1.15% on your savings account if you do that. And if you also look at FTDs, if you, you don't want to fix money in the bank with the market rate of interest at all-time low, what we've seen in the last 12 months is that FTD rate has come to as low as 1%, depending on the volume. We think that will also come down further. Um, for, for market rates, which you know portfolio investors are looking at, it also means that, you know, uh, rates generally, the yield on government bills, corporate papers, all of these rates are going to take a cue from the NPR because the NPR is the most important, is the benchmark rate. Well, 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 and every other rate, well, you know, take a cue from it. Well, is this, uh, when we talk about the savers, and it's about 1.15%, is this a very nice way of the government say, can we just take, can you loan us this money very quickly, folks? Uh, can we just take it from you instead of keeping it in the bank where the bank can give it to, to those who want to do business in medium and small enterprises, whatever? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, we'll just pay you a token, at least for now, uh, pending the time things get better. Well, that's one way to look at it, um, certainly, because it also speaks to what the federal government is going to be, you know, um, issuing treasury bills as well as bond, which we all buy. The portfolio managers, the pension funds, you know, are by uh, regulation expected to, you know, invest in all government papers. So whether they like it or not, regardless of the rate at which government is issuing those bonds, they have to, to buy because 
they have um, statutory limits or maximum that you have to keep in government paper. So yes, government is going to benefit a lot from that. But more importantly, the central bank itself is saying, guys, we don't want you saving any money idling in the bank. We want you to actually either spend the money or invest it in the productive sector of the economy to spur economic activity. That, that makes sense to me. That makes sense to me. So what about the market street this week? What are we seeing already? We're looking at the uh, a 30-year narrow bond auction today, clearing at 8.94%. I mean, I think it's going to go lower, um, if, if anything. If it, if it doesn't stay flat, it looks like with more and more pressure from the central bank, the only way for the fixed income market is, um, I mean, is lower. But for stocks, you know, it's a little bit positive for, for stocks. And that's because when you cut interest rates, banks have access to cheaper deposits. And that means their cost of funds is slightly lower, you know, that improves their bottom lines and, you know, they can pay more dividend or at least maintain the size of their dividends. So, I mean, banking stocks become more attractive when things like this happen, whether they give out loans or not. Typically, they should give out more loans, but I, we, we, we think they'll be weary about the level of uncertainty in the economy. So we're not sure how they are going to balance that. Yes, that's, that's my, actually my final question to you. How soon do you see any rate changes by the MPC? And do you think, uh, what are the catalysts you'll be looking for? Whether it's going to happen in November, or you think we're done for this year until 2021? I mean, to be very honest with you, I think there's a lot of uncertainty around policy. Um, the big elephant in the room, as far as the Nigerian economy is concerned today, is the issue of illiquidity in the FX markets. And if you look at where inflation rate is at 13.2%, uh, the fact that it's going, you know, it's probably going to gallop in September due to the major policy changes by government. And if you put that side by side, um, you know, market rate of interest, the yield in fixed income market, you just mentioned how much bond cleared today at about 8%. That puts real return on investment that's, you know, about negative. Now, it will be very, very difficult for the central bank or the government to attract foreign capital. You just listed about five countries that are, the that are investment you know, destination in Africa. Nigeria is not there, but we need FX. Now, because of that, I think at some point, central bank is going to need to you know, think about how to resolve the dislocation in the market so that we can attract mm -hmm. foreign capital and then, you know, bring back growth. 50% of this economy is driven by services. Yeah. And the bulk of those services yeah. are import items. So, I mean, I, I, I think you. it can happen anytime, depending on the thought or the views of the CBN about the currency market. Okay, let's leave it there for today. Wale Olusi, Head of Research at United Capital. Thank you so much uh, for coming on the program.